to the polls. Now, the country and the people have survived the turbulent economic conditions uh, over the years. Now, thanks to, uh, in part, the church, which has brought hope and inspiration in the face of deep-rooted challenges. Well, they've also kept us on our toes, um, pointing to us, the ills of society, and helping us address them. One of uh, the churches we're talking about has been doing that for 175 years. I'm talking about the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. To mark this milestone, uh, they'll be holding a number of activities to drum home the need for Ghanaians to contribute to uh, their quota in navigating the current economic situation. So guess what? We have uh, Reverend Dr. Setri. Nyomi, immediate past general secretary of the World Communion of Reformed Churches and uh, spokesperson for the EPCG 175 years anniversary uh, committee joining us in studio. And uh, it's a good time to be talking to you, Reverend. Welcome. To Thank the you. Pulse. I'm glad to be here. Uh, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, let me say, first of all, say congratulations to the EP Church. Um, you've, you've done quite a lot um, in education, in in, in the spiritual lives of many Ghanaians. You've done quite a lot, one, 175 years. But then what would you say uh, is that story of, of the EP Church um, from its start to where we are today here in Ghana? Yes. Uh, from the very beginning in 1847 when the church came, and indeed we should say that it's not only the effort of the missionaries, but also the efforts of the chiefs and people who invited the missionaries to come. So the Peking nation invited nation to, the church to come. And from that very beginning, the church saw itself as contributing to the lives of the people in terms of bringing the gospel, of course, mm -hmm. but also bringing education, right. which is a very key item in the development of any nation. Helping in the healthcare. Uh, helping in agricultural extension stations, which was meant to boost the agricultural production. Mm. All these are uh, contributing to the lives of the people. In terms of education, uh, starting from the Volta region, but now all over the country, the EP Church has schools from the basic level to the tertiary level. Uh, we do have uh, the EP University mm. uh, College, uh, until the AP University College came, we had a uh, training college uh, and we also have many secondary schools. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, in the north, we saw also that we needed to break the whatever issues are there, right. which are challenges. And so Bimbila mm -hmm. Training College is right. one of those right. as well. So we have been very much involved mm -hmm. in being partners. Right. Uh, in development. But now you are 175, and as part of the um, reflections, you're reflecting on your achievements and also trying to look at the way forward. Yes. Why so? Yes, indeed. And you missed one of them, uh, the challenges. <laughs> yes, because we need indeed, to talk about the challenges too. Indeed, uh, for any right. human being right. or any institution, mm -hmm. if we are to continue making an impact, we need to look back. Mm. Anyone who doesn't look back at its history right. is doomed to fail again. Right. Uh, but indeed, uh, in that assessment, we've been able to mark the achievements that we've had. Mm. And, and yes, some of the things I've listed right. are, are some of those, mm. uh, the, the people who have passed through our educational institutions right. Right. and what they have contributed to the nation mm. are some of those. And yes, we are not just supposed to celebrate those and feel that we have made these achievements and that's it. Mm -hmm. We need to map how we have been challenged also mm -hmm. and to see what we learn from those challenges. Mm -hmm. And we have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And that helps us shape the fact that we want even more today mm -hmm. to be very sharp in the renewal of our churches, mm -hmm. in the renewal of our nation, in contributing to the development of our nation, mm. in being a voice for justice mm. in this nation. And now we're in a peculiar situation. Everybody knows about it, that there's a, an economic crisis confronting the nation. Yes. Uh, if you look at the contribution of the church, and if not necessarily the EP church, but Christendom in general, uh, the claim is that you need to do a lot more yes. in supporting the nation. And I guess that's where we need to also reflect on the EP 
story. Yes. Uh, what has been the contribution from, from the church in improving uh, economic situation as well? Yes. Yeah, to start with, uh, before even the contributions we've made yeah. in improving, right. being part of articulating the cries of the people. Mm. Mm. The church often, whether it's the EP church or any other church, mm. often is a place where people come crying when we are faced with challenges and economic challenges are, are what we are talking about right now. Right. We see the people, we pray with them, we, and we uh, ensure that where there is help that we can give, we are giving so that some people don't fall between the, the cracks. Mm. So that's, that's the first calling that uh, we have. Right. But we have also asked ourselves what concrete things we could do to alleviate the situation. I'll mention one of the things in the past and one of the things mm -hmm. uh, in the present. In the past, for example, when uh, the whole area right. has been faced with major water problems, mm -hmm. it is the EP Church that ensured that there was a, a water tanker uh, to supply, mm -hmm. not only to church communities, but, but to supply uh, water to the uh, different areas. Mm -hmm. And so today we can also say that when we are faced with very difficult financial situations, mm. uh, the church uh, has been at the forefront of asking members of the church are, uh, include economists, right. Right. they include business people, mm. they include others who can mm. play a role. Mm. And yes, the message from our pulpits mm. as well as the networking we have within ourselves mm. Uh, ensuring that we are able to contribute something. Mm. And again, it comes to water again. Right. Realizing that uh, we need to be doing something to support, to, to support. Mm. Uh, the AP Church just inaugurated right. its water plant in Chitu mm. uh, just a couple of months ago right. uh, as a way of indicating to people in and outside the church mm we need to find entrepreneurial opportunities mm. in order to contribute to the mm. economy. Mm. Unless we are ensuring that we are employing Ghanaians, the unemployment situation will be mm. as it is. Uh, and some also feel this is an opportune moment to also rekindle the spirit of patriotism amongst your church members as well. Because if you look at the statistics, over um, well, 70% of the Ghanaian population Christian, so obviously people who serve in public office, people who serve the nation, would majority of them obviously come from the church, and yes. most of them, we should say, uh, should be coming from the EP church as well. How are you using this anniversary to also drive that spirit in them? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, in fact, this anniversary is coming at a time at a time that the EP church has gotten the theme, "Revive us again, O Lord." Mm. And by that we are saying God should revive us as church, mm -hmm. but also to be effective citizens and light and salt of the places that we are found in. Right. And that message is also a message of patriotism. If we are revived, then whether we are in government or in some profession somewhere or in the market somewhere, mm -hmm. the thoughts would not be, what is in it for me? But what is in it for, for the nation? Right. How can God use me and in, in my talents and my thoughts and my faith to build this nation? Because God has made us Ghanaians for a reason. He didn't make us uh, citizens of any other country. Right. And we owe it as gratitude to God to be able to do whatever we are called to do in a way that mm. builds our nation. Mm. So our messages from the pulpits, our messages as we engage member, member churches include indeed mm -hmm. making that patriotism right. felt. And we'll be talking about perhaps the day, the activities that you'll be rolling out, but I also want to take your thoughts on some of the other issues happening and bordering on that national development. Uh, for instance, uh, the issue about illegal mining. Mm -hmm. uh, it's come up, we've seen some pastors, some preachers and leaders of, of the Christian community uh, told some of the um, illegal mining sites. And the verdict is that as a nation, we're sick, we need revival, mm -hmm. just as you're also indicating here. Uh, for the EP Church, uh, 
how do you feel we could, I mean, positively or conclusively deal with the issue of illegal mining which is confronting us yes. now? Yeah, to leave no stone unturned to expose it to the point of exposing people who are behind it. Because indeed, water is basic. Right. If our water bodies are being polluted yeah. for the sake of the pockets of a few, we should say very clearly how sinful and how wrong this is. And yes, when our colleagues uh, went mm -hmm. uh, to those places right. the other day, um, I've seen comments on the social media. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, you've and, seen that and, as well, yes, the prayer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As, as if mm -hmm. going to pray there was wrong. I beg to differ. Y it's indeed. You don't feel it was wrong? Some say, well, yes. I mean, practically, we should yes. be dealing with those, exactly. who, those, who, those for who us, are engaged in that. For us as Christians, mm -hmm. going there to say we are there to pray for this to stop is the beginning. And those very church leaders who went have taken more steps after that. Uh, and so when social media makes it sound as if that's the only thing the church is doing, mm -hmm. then I'm sorry they didn't wait to see the whole, whole story. Right. Until today, they continue to work to expose. They have engaged government. Mm -hmm. And we continue to do so as, as a people. And our stand is we should ensure that even if there are big names behind these, they need to be exposed. We don't need impunity in this country anymore. We need for the truth to come out so that we can arrest that. The other thing is it's our very people in churches who may own cocoa farms, who may own some other productive uh, avenues yeah. of making money, mm -hmm. but because they don't see it as productive, they are, losing it. They are selling them off right or uh, turning them into gold uh, mining uh, fields. The, the belief is we, we can never yes. end illegal mining. That's yes. a belief of some. Yes. We, we believe we can do yes. something about it. Well, what's, what's your take on I, that? I believe we can do something about it. Uh, first, if there's political will, we could. Our role as churches is to challenge those who have the political power, political power mm -hmm. to develop the will to end it, which, which is what we are in the process of doing. Uh, not only the EP Church, the EP Church is doing that, mm -hmm. uh, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the Methodist Church, all are in the process of uh, mm -hmm. doing that, of ensuring that that political will is developed. Mm -hmm. But to also use every opportunity we get to speak against it. Mm -hmm. And if any is involved in our member churches, we also have that responsibility mm. to shame them into knowing it is sinful. Okay, well, we need to be wrapping up. Um, we've seen some activities uh, put in place by the Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. The Orthodox churches are also doing same uh, week for fasting and prayer for the nation uh, to, to deal with illegal mining. I'm, I'm just wondering if as part of the 175 uh, anniversary of the EP Church, you're devoting a portion of that to praying for, for our lands to be healed? Yes, we are, but uh, we've, while we've noted that the illegal mining, the galam say is a major problem, mm -hmm. we've also noted that it's not the only problem. Uh, our current economic challenges yeah. are broader than that. Mm -hmm. So we are both praying for that and also drawing attention to the fact that those who are called to serve the nation should be serving the nation right. and not themselves mm -hmm. or not in a political party. The church is not in to support this party or that party, mm -hmm. but to draw attention to what is good for the nation, what God is calling us to do to make this nation great and strong, mm -hmm. stronger uh, than it currently is. And if it is, then we'll be working towards uh, uh, and and, and, and the, since the, the church land. is concerned about the economy, I'm sure that many of your uh, church members are lamenting as well. So it's part of the reason why you're championing that. Um, if there's anything leadership should be very much considerate about in tackling the challenge, what would be the message of the church to leadership? Yes. Yeah. One, one of the things that we want to see as a nation is that those who hold the political power as well as the economic uh, 
uh, gurus of this nation should be able to demonstrate to us that they know where things have gone wrong, mm -hmm. they know what needs to be done, mm -hmm. and they are themselves making the sacrifices mm -hmm. in that direction. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to challenge uh, the powers that be mm -hmm. in that direction. We ourselves are also indicating that within our own structures, mm -hmm. We need to set the example, and the EP Church is doing that. Let's wrap up with um, the series of activities. Um, when is this starting, and um, yeah. what, what are we to expect? We started earlier this year. We had a formal launching in July, but this Wednesday is a major activity. Uh, the, when the missionaries started the journey towards the beginning of the church, they started in Christenborg Castle, Osu. Right. So we have a float that is going from Osu, to Peki Blengo. On Are you Wednesday. walking there? <laughs> well, it's a float, so most people Whichever go on, on, on a track. Yeah, yeah, uh, but there will be cars following it. Right. Uh, also, members of the church will be meeting it at various mm. uh, points, points on the way. Right. So that's one activity. Mm. Uh, a major activity is this Saturday in Peki Blengo. There will be uh, a deba of chiefs and people right. uh, led by the uh, uh, king of the uh, Pekis. And uh, that's, again, another milestone. Right. Uh, during next week, there will be a number of activities uh, that will engage people mm. both in Peki and in Ho, where I, our head office is. Right. The climax will be the Thanksgiving service mm -hmm. on the 20th of uh, November, November. Right. also in Peki. Mm -hmm. So we, we hope many will yeah. join us, yeah. EP, uh, non-EP, uh, this is for the nation yeah, of Ghana. Yeah, yeah. This is not just for you. And I'm interested in seeing how the floats would, would work out because well, it promises to be exciting. Right, so, right. <laughs> Reverend yes, Doc, yes. thank you for joining us uh, here on The Pulse. We're grateful yes. for your time. Yes. Uh, and of course, um, you're watching The Pulse. Don't forget that uh, we'll bring you some more stories after this break.